Hello and welcome back to the Alchemical Arts. Hope everybody is well and is ready to kick off the new year. And so, in the spirit of that, I thought we'd start by doing some preparation chemistry today. We're going to synthesize alum. Alum is an integral ingredient in lake making, as well as fixative for dyeing cloth or wool and things like that. It's a potassium aluminium sulfate, so it's like a double salt of potassium sulfate and aluminium sulfate and it's been used for many thousands of years in relationship to color production, whether it's through lake pigments, as I said, or through the dyeing of textiles. So what we're going to be doing today is finding a simple method to synthesize alum, and it's such a simple and easy method that this should be something you can achieve at home. It's a relatively non-toxic process because the starting materials are readily available and aren't really that like they're not something that you have to be super careful with in terms of um, protective gear and working and all that sort of stuff doesn't mean you know you shouldn't take relative precautions or chemistry should be done carefully regardless of what you're using but nonetheless we're going to go through the process today so why am I synthesizing alum well, for me, as someone who regularly uses alum in lake making um, processes and uses quite a lot of it when I make lakes, I end up going through heaps of alum. And I find it, it's actually kind of relatively expensive compared to a, a lot of things. And those expenses tend to add up when you're trying to make lake pigments. So if you've got the time and want to cut some costs, this should be a good way to cut costs. So. Traditionally, I buy alum from textile dyeing supply places or occasionally art stores and I feel like they're hyperinflating the price a little bit and if I was to buy it industrially in bulk, it would probably be a lot cheaper. So what we're going to do today is we're going to start with some potassium sulfate and aluminium sulfate. I have here, this is aluminium sulfate, which is a flocculant that you can buy from the hardware store that uses to uh, clear out water um, so you can use it to clean pools and um, muddy ponds or things like that and you want to it helps uh, collect flocculates the sediment and drops it down and clears up the water so it's a really easy thing to buy it's usually relatively cheap and you can buy it in like big bulk like two, three, five kilo bags, probably even bigger, like 20 kilos. And then the second ingredient is sulfate of potash or potassium sulfate, which is a fertilizer that you can also buy from the hardware store or from a garden supply place. And it's just used as your regular garden fertilizer if you're wanting to add potassium to the soil or sulfates and stuff like that. Um, so those two things are very cheap to acquire, can be acquired in large amounts. And so from there, we're going to go through the process and synthesize them down. It's a very, very easy process. So we'll move over to the workbench here and I will show you what we're going to do. So what we have here is our basic lead. So here we have our two main ingredients that we're going to be working with. So this pile here is 100 grams of aluminium sulfate. And these little sort of grayish white, off-white chunks here is the potassium sulfate. I believe the reason the potassium sulfate is like this is there's probably some impurities and other things in there to some degree. I don't know what the purity is. I could look up the SDS sheet of this particular fertilizer to find out what degree of purity or the amount of potassium sulfate that's in here and what other things are in there. So we're going to have to clean this up a little bit, but essentially all we're going to do is we're going to take some beakers here, put some hot water in there, and we're going to dissolve both of these into the solution. We're going to try and make a fairly concentrated solution. Um, so here I have 100 grams of aluminium sulfate and 25 grams of potassium sulfate. Now I'm not entirely sure of the balanced chemical equations going on here, but I basically found a fairly simple guide, I think it was like a high school chemistry guide, that was 
recommending doing about this ratio. So they were doing 50 grams of sulfate of aluminium to 12 and a half grams of the potassium. So I've scaled it up a little bit just to make my batch worthwhile. But basically what we're gonna do is we will dissolve both of these, make concentrated solutions, and I'll show you how we're gonna try and clean this one up a little bit. And then we'll move to the next step. Okay, so I've measured out in this smaller beaker here about 100 mils of water. And to that we're going to add our potassium sulfate. And then we're going to get this stirring on the hot plate, like so, until we dissolve all of these little chunks here. Yeah. Which should take a few minutes. Now I could crush up the little chunks and make this dissolve quicker, but this will do fine. The hot water will help dissolve it. And what we're looking for here is trying to use the minimal amount of water as we can because we're going to be trying to boil down the solution or heat the solution and evaporate it down a little bit later to concentrate it even further so if you use too much water now you're just going to be uh, increasing the process and time that it takes for everything to do what it does um, using hot water also helps the salts dissolve much quicker now as you can see here there's sort of a yellowy discoloration to the potassium which I think is probably some sort of iron compound in there which is um, contaminating this and that's going to be actually quite bad for our final alum but I will show you how to purify and make sure that the alum is iron free. In this larger beaker here I've measured out about 300 mils of hot water and we're just going to add all of our potassium, uh, our aluminium sulfate to that. And I've just got myself a little stirring spoon here. And this one is much easier to stir up and dissolve because it's a much cleaner, nicer, finer salt and should dissolve quite readily. As I said, if you don't have a stir plate, you can just stir everything by hand. It's just going to take a little bit longer or you might want to crush up your aluminium sulfate, uh, your potassium sulfate up a little bit, depending on how it comes. But otherwise, just give everything a good stir until you get a nice, dissolved, concentrated solution. And then from there, we're going to do a little bit of filtering on everything, just to filter out any particulates or impurities. And then we'll move on to the next step, which is combining the two liquids together and reducing the amount of water. And then we'll get to crystallizing the alum. Okay, so we've managed to get this to dissolve, but as you can see, there's all sorts of like weird little bits of stuff in there that are obviously impurities and we've got that slight discoloration so what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna take my large filter funnel here and put some filter paper in and I'm not gonna bother vacuum filtering I'm just gonna hot filter the gra using gravity here just to clear out a bunch of that gunk and just to try and get a slightly cleaner solution Given that the mixture is quite hot, you should see it come through quite quickly and easily. There we go. It's starting to drip through now. Hopefully that doesn't take too long. Um, if you don't, obviously I'm not expecting everyone to have big bircher funnels, uh, bircher funnels and f proper filter paper but you could just use a coffee filter for this process. That should do the job well enough. Um, or you could use cotton wool, although you're not gonna get all the impurities out that way. As you can see here too, with the um, aluminium sulfate, it's gone slightly cloudy, and that is, I believe, a process known as hydrolysis, where either impurities in the water or the water itself slightly um, shifts some of that aluminium sulfate into aluminium hydroxide um, or alumina 
and so that's sort of causing that milky cloudiness and that should actually get more pronounced when I mix the two together. We'll get a bit more of that happening. One way you can stop this from happening is adding just a few drops of concentrated sulfuric acid. But because I'm wanting to make this a method that people can do at home, I'm not gonna do that at this point in time. And I'm actually not too concerned about the small amount of alumina hydroxide being produced in this because we're going to wash the crystals of alum later on. And so as you see, it'll be quite easy to wash out the alum, I mean the alumina hydroxide from the alum crystals. And, you know, a tiny bit of um, alumina uh, contamination in the whole process isn't the worst thing given that we're making lake pigments here and we actually end up making aluminium hydroxide in the process of laking. So a little bit of, you know, tiny trace amounts of aluminium hydroxide are not going to be a problem. And as I said, it should be pretty easy to clean most of it out. So this is almost finished filtering through. If I was using the vacuum filter, it would obviously be much faster. So we still got a bit of discoloration there. But again, that's not going to be a major problem when it comes to our crystallization process. What we're trying mostly to get rid of, which I will show you in just a second, is that we have a residue here in the filter. So if I bring this down, you can see, see this gunky residue here. See this gunky residue here? I don't know what this is exactly. It's just part of the fertilizer, but that's mostly what we're trying to filter out here. So now we've got our solution of potassium sulfate, a solution of aluminium sulfate. All we're gonna do is add that into there, like so. bit of a swirl and then we're going to bring in our hot plate. So basically now I've got the two solutions in here together and I'm just stirring them and heating them on the hot plate to essentially evaporate down some of the liquid so that we can get this a more concentrated um, solution. Because what we're going to do is we're going to take the hot concentrated solution and we're going to try and rapidly cool it down. And what that should do is as it cools down, the alum that has been produced, so the potassium aluminium sulfate, won't be able to stay in solution anymore and should start to crystallize out as big chunky crystals of alum. And we'll be able to, over the process of about 24 hours, collect a nice big crop of crystals We'll be able to pour off the remainder liquid, wash and clean those crystals, and we should have pretty pure, clean alum at that stage. Now, if you don't have something like a hot plate with a magnetic stirrer, what I would suggest doing is either taking this outside and using an electric hot plate in a big kind of glass jar that you know can be heated. Now, don't boil it vigorously. Just warm it up so that it's hot, and evaporating off and you know it's helpful to have graduated lines because I can see at the moment my total volume is 450 mils on oh no, 500 mils and I'm gonna wait till it probably gets down to about the 300 mil mark to before I start cooling it down as that's a good little indicator maybe dropping you know a third of the volume out off to evaporation if you don't have an electric hot plate you could get away with using an aluminium pot and a small camp stove outside. Um, obviously, if you use an aluminium pot, we're not going to have any weird cross-contamination reaction issues from the aluminium in here and the aluminium pot. Um, I wouldn't really recommend going and cooking this on your own like kitchen stove or that kind of thing. But again, it's not particularly toxic chemistry going on here. The liquid could be mildly irritating to the skin, as that's part of what alum can do. But otherwise, just keep it simple. All we're trying to do here is heat it and evaporate it, keep the solution hot so that we don't get crystallization happening until we want it to. And that's about it. So I'm gonna leave this probably for about, I don't know, 35, 40 minutes uh, until it drops down by about 200 mils. After a couple of hours of 
heating this solution here of our potassium sulfate and aluminium sulfate, I'm down to just below 300 mils, which I started with 500 mils of liquid. So, you know, we're looking at, what's that, a reduction of about 200 mils. So that's pretty good. As you can see, it's gone a lot more milky as it has reduced down. And that's due to the fact that uh, some of, as I said, the hydrolysis is occurring and some of the aluminium sulfate is turning into aluminium hydroxide. Um, it could also just be impurities in the water. So what we're going to do is we're going to attempt to filter this. Now you don't have to filter it at this stage, but you will have to wash out the alumina hydroxide. Um, so what I'm going to do is I've just got my filter funnel set up here with my filter paper in here. And we're just going to hot filter this through quite simply. Um, it's important to filter this while hot because the cooling process is part of our crystallization process. So that's kind of important. I'm not using any vacuum here at the moment. So we'll see how slowly this goes through and whether or not the alumina hydroxide clogs up the filter paper quickly, but I'm hoping that everything filters through quite nicely. I also just realized that my flask is probably only just going to fit the 300 mils in there and I may have to decant some off as we go but I'm going to let this filter through hopefully it doesn't take too long and we'll check back in on the cooling and crystallization step. So this is what I have after filtering which it's still quite cloudy and to be honest maybe the filtering process isn't really worth it and you could probably speed up the filtering process just by doing it through some cotton wool in a funnel. Um, so all that we have to do now is cool this down. So I'm gonna get, I've got a crystallizing dish here and I'm gonna place this in here and I'm gonna put some cold water around here to cool this down. You could also place this in the fridge. Although I wouldn't, again, recommend mixing any of your chemical work with food. So if you had a dedicated separate fridge for this, that would be good. Otherwise, I'm just going to let it... I guess we're just trying to cool it down. So I might put some ice around the edge here to help cool this down. And then we're just going to leave it overnight. And we should come back the next day and we'll have crystals. So I actually left both of these for a few days here. And as you can see at the bottom of this one, so this is the original container I had the liquid in and I poured off a lot of the um, solution into this crystallizing dish, but I also left behind a bunch of crystals here that had happened and formed from the initial cooling. And then after a couple more days, these crystals here formed um, upon sitting for a bit longer. As we can see, on these guys here, there's a bit of discoloration, which is I believe some of the alumina hydroxide has just settled on top. And what we're actually going to do is pour off this liquid and we'll get the wash bottle here and we'll give everything a little bit of a wash and start to clean up our alum crystals and then we'll dry them. If you're using like room temperature or cold water, not too much of the alum crystals should re-dissolve, um, which means that we'll be able to collect them all quite nicely so let's let's tip this off and just have a look here so if we just focus in on the crystallizing dish here as you can see we've got all these awesome looking alum crystals formed all sparkly and nice but there is a little bit of white milky discoloration in there. You can see that starting to form at the bottom there, which if we just get in and wash with the wash bottle, I can already see, if we just swirl it around, that milky liquid there is just water and a little bit of alumina hydroxide mixed in. So we'll just keep tipping that off and giving them a bit more of a wash. As I said, because we're doing lake making, the tiny amount of alumina is not too bad of a impurity. What we're trying to avoid is any iron in here, which will be disastrous to our lake making endeavors. So the more we wash our alum crystals, 
the pure it will be. If we were getting very pedantic, we could re-dissolve all of these into liquid, reboil them down and recrystallize them to get absolutely pure results. But I'm going to remove these from here and then I'm going to dry them in the sun on some filter paper and we'll have a look at the final result. So after a lot of washing and drying, here we have our resulting alum. So we have some of the really nice looking alum crystals here that are kind of a mid-size ones. And then we've got, this was actually from a few batches. I did a sort of separate batch off camera just to play around with some more slower crystallization. And if you actually reduce the temperature in a slower manner, over a longer period of time, you can get some really big pieces like this to form. It's got some really cool geometric patterns. And like even looking at like a chunk like this, if we can get that to focus nicely, you can see there's all sorts of interesting geometry going on in these crystals. Crystal growing is a whole hobby in and of itself, but as you can see, fairly simple to make alum. It all looks fairly pure and fairly clean. Um, I would need to do some testing to see if there is any iron contaminants in this. But as far as I can tell, it should be useful. But if you were wanting to be extra pedantic, what you would do now is take all of this, dissolve it back in water, reduce the water content down, and then recrystallize. And you should have a much cleaner product if you do that. So that concludes our first video back for the year and basically I hope it was an easy to follow and informative process and that you'll be able to try and make your own alum at home if you're so inclined otherwise just you know if you can find the alum at a good price buy it, it saves a lot of time and effort but if you're curious it's not a difficult process as you saw it's basically just dissolving two salts in liquid giving them a bit of filter and cleaning, adding the two together, reducing the liquid down, cooling it, collecting the crystallized product, and washing it. I'm probably gonna go and recrystallize everything that I made there, just so that I can um, obtain like very high quality purity of the aluminium, potassium aluminium sulfate, the alum. But that's just a personal choice because I really wanna make sure that and maybe you should consider this too, that when I'm making my lake pigments, I want them to be as contaminant free as possible. That really ensures like a good, rich purity of color. So it's worth going to the effort if you're gonna be preparing your own alum to make sure that it's clean and pure. If you're buying alum, it's very likely that it's already very pure. That's part of the benefit of like modern industrial chemistry is that we have access to extremely pure materials that, you know, people in the past when they were, you know, when it was more common for people to make pigments on smaller scales and locally produced and stuff like that, people didn't always have access to the cleanest, purest materials. So they had to work with all sorts of different, uh, shortcomings and things and methods and stuff like that. Whereas these days, you know, we have access to almost everything at an extremely pure uh, form, which is good. So I think in the next episode, we'll take this alum that I've made and we'll start doing some more lake pigment making um, and you'll be able to see that it works well. I have done a small test with it just to make sure that it actually works and it does, it works fine. Um, so stay tuned and we're gonna do a fair bit of lake making processes over the coming months.